Noreen, you start. Hello. Noreen. For joining here today, I am now introduced to lecture. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, ma'am. I'm. I'm not listening. No, banga banga. You please continue. Yes, Noreen. You please continue. Very poor network. Ma'am, yes. Today's program. Um, uh, we are really honored to have uh, such a um, resource person like uh, um, Professor Dr. Sankal uh, Kumar with us. And uh, first of all, I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to our um, chairperson, Professor Dr. K. Mohsen, sir, and our enacting speaker, Professor Faridabagam, ma'am, for giving their valuable time. Professor Faridah Begum, ma'am, is the chairman of the Department of Pharmacy. Uh, she's an apprentice and a life member of Pharmacy Council. And I would like to express my heartfelt thanks to all of my dear colleagues and my dear students for joining here. In the current situation, uh, you all are busy, we all know. Nevertheless, you have given your valuable time to us. Thank you very much for that. Um, <laughs> first, I uh, and uh, most importantly, it would not be possible uh, to arrange this webinar uh, without the great help of some people. Uh, Shiraji Islam Pradhan sir and Belal Bhai, Halakha Jaman Bhai, thank you very much for your kind support and cooperation. Our resource person, Dr. Uh, R. Sankhil Kumar sir, uh, currently working as a professor and head, Department of Pharmaceutical Chemistry. Shami Vivekananda College of Pharmacy, Tamil Nadu. He has a very versed pro uh, profile and very excellent academic background. He's a professor and at the same time, a good researcher. And uh, he was awarded his PhD degree from Jawaharlal Nehru Technological University, Hyderabad in 2014 in the field of uh, uh, pharmaceutical science. And he has 17 years of teaching and research experience. Uh, currently, he is con conducting various projects and uh, he published 80 research papers, 66 of which are international publications. He is a life member of various uh, professional bodies like Association of Teachers of India and International Natural Product uh, Science Task Force, Indian Pharmacological Society, and the Indian Pharmacist Association and so on. He is a peer reviewer and serving for various national and international peer review journals like Asian Journal of Applied Chemistry and Research. This is a very good journal, you all know. And Indian Journal of Pharmacology. At the same time, Journal of Complementary and uh, Alternative Medical Research. He is working with nanoparticles and trying to find uh, their applications. Currently, he is working on uh, in silico drug designing from natural products 
and uh, drug repurposing. Before starting our discussion session, first of all, I would like to request to our honorable inaugural speaker, Professor Farida Begum, ma'am, to say something. Thank you, Ms. Norin. Yes, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, Honorable Chairman, Professor Dr. K. M. Moshin, Vice Chancellor, Dhaka, uh, Dhaka International University, and uh, Resource Speaker, Dr. R. Sinthol Kumar, uh, Swami Vivekananda College of Arts and Science for Women, Professor and Head, Department of Pharmacy, Tamil Nadu, India. Uh, my dear Professor Sirajul Islam, Prodhan, Director, IQAC, uh, Noreen Firdosi, Lecturer, Department of Pharmacy, my dear colleagues and students of Pharmacy Department, uh, good evening, everyone. Today's topic, recent trends in drug discovery and design. Uh, arranged by Department of Pharmacy, uh, collaboration with IQAC, we thankful to IQAC director, Professor Sirajul Islam. Uh, he is a very energetic and uh, he uh, who made the program successful. And uh, he made uh, the other uh, program also. Uh, today's lecture is very important for the teachers and students of pharmacy department and all of the other uh, peoples in the field of medicine, biotechnology and pharmacology, drug discovery is the process by which new candidate medication are discovered. And um, uh, historically, drugs were discovered by identifying the active ingredient from traditional uh, remedies by uh, Serendi Peters discovery as with penicillin. And uh, more recently, chemical libraries of synthetic small molecules, natural products, extract were screened in intact cells or whole organism to identify substances that had a desirable therapeutic effect in a process known as classical pharmacology. Modern drug discovery involves the identification of screening its medic medicinal chemistry and optimization of those hits to increase the affinity selectivity to reduce the potential side effects. Despite, ad, uh, despite advances in technology and understanding of biological system, drug discovery is, is still a lengthy, expensive, difficult, and inefficient process with low rate of new therapeutic discovery. In the 21st century, basic discovery research is funded primarily by government and by and by philanthropic organization while late stage development is funded by pharmaceutical companies or venture capitalists discovering drugs that may be commercial success or public health success involves a complex interaction between investors, industry, academia, patient laws, regularity, exclusivity, marketing, and need to balance with communication. Now, we are very eagerly waiting for the speech of our renowned professor, speaker, Dr. Sinhal. Uh, the today's topic is recent trends in drug discovery and design. He's a resource person 
and uh, we are eager to listen his lecture please dr sinthal yeah thank you so much ma'am and uh, good evening to all the dignitaries and uh, um, thank you navin for your nice introduction also shall i may share my screen now yeah yes sir pardon the floor is it visible now yes am i audible to everyone yes yeah yes sir thank you. Okay. Thank you. yeah thank you. good 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 so good evening to all so today i am going to talk about the recent trends in the drug discovery and uh, drug design process okay so i am dr sendil kumar working as a professor and head in the department of pharmaceutical chemistry in swami vegananda college of pharmacy tirchangur tamil nadu india okay and uh, today topic is covered all these type of uh, points okay so what is the meaning of a drug substance and why we have to go for the new drug discovery and what are the trends current scenario history and market scenario in the drug discovery process and what are the various steps or involved in the drug discovery process and the role of bioinformatics in informatics genomics and proteomics in the drug discovery and the role of cad that is nothing but your computer aided drug designing in drug discovery and if time permits uh we will discuss about the, some open source online tools used in the drug discovery process also okay so as a pharmacist we must know what is the meaning of a drug substance okay so a chemical substance which may be obtained from a natural source or from a biological source or it may be obtained from a synthetic source or a semi synthetic source which is used for the diagnosis treatment or the prevention of disease okay so basically all the drug substances or chemicals okay but not all the chemicals or the drugs so the chemical substance should be converted into a drug means the substance should have some drugability property okay it should have some peculiar property so that it can be converted into a drug substance okay so this slide shows why we have to go for the new drug discovery process okay so uh, to uh, because of the patent expiry so in the industry point of view the people are uh, investing more so uh, because of the patent expiry they want to invent some new drugs they want to launch some new molecules okay so that's why the pharmaceutical companies are uh, doing a large investment in the pharmaceutical company and for the emerging of new diseases like your covid or your ebola viral infections and all uh, so because of the emerging new diseases we have to invent some new molecules and the third thing is the low efficacy and resistance of the existing molecules in case of antibiotics and antimicrobials and then some anti cancer agents also the existing molecules loses its potency okay so in order to overcome that problem we have to develop some newer molecules also and to reduce the adverse drug reactions and side effects we have to invent some new molecules and ultimately to reduce the health cost also so this is the big burden in nowadays in the developing countries like bangladesh and india also okay so we have to reduce the health cost also and the last one to sustain the industrial activity okay so these are all the reasons why the pharmaceutical companies are showing some interest on the, uh, the the discovery of new molecules so this is the trend in the drug discovery okay in the 18 up to 18th century the drugs so derived from the natural sources okay so lot of drugs so obtained from the plant origin okay and they are used to treat the disorders okay so there are limited possibilities to obtain the drugs okay only the plant origin or some animal origin is utilized for the um, source of drug substance okay and the drugs are prepared by the individuals in small scale okay like the traditional medical healers they are uh, preparing the medicine in a small scale and that kind of drugs were not purified standardized or tested okay and this kind of drugs are administered to a limited population only okay and there is no controls and there is no idea of mechanisms but in late 19th century the drugs were obtained from the synthetic source right 
so most of the drugs are synthesized and uh, we have lot of uh, possibilities okay and these drugs are prepared by the pharmaceutical companies in a large scale for the commercial purpose okay and these drugs are highly purified okay so that is the main thing so that's why this allopathic medicine is called as evidence based medicine okay so all these drugs are highly purified standardized and tested okay and all these data are collected and documented okay so based on this data the administration of these drugs throughout the world is possible nowadays okay and because of tight legislative control the quality is maintained okay and the mechanisms are partly or fully understood right so that is a trend in the drug discovery process and this is the current scenario okay so in the past most of the drugs have been discovered either by identifying the active ingredient from the traditional remedies or by the serendipitous discovery okay so based on the plant based drugs or by accidental invention most of the drugs have been discovered in earlier days but now we know that diseases are controlled at the molecular level and the physiological level okay now we know the molecular pharmacology okay how the disease is happening or how it changes the cellular structure inside the cell in the pathological conditions okay in the shape of the molecule at the atomic level is also well understood and nowadays the information technology plays an important role in the drug discovery process so this is the history of drug discovery so already you know all these things okay in the pre 1919 the plant based drugs were used and the discovery drug discovery is mainly based on the serendipity method and in 1920 to 30s the vitamins and vaccines are introduced and in 1940s is called as the antibiotics era and in 1952 70s the uh, discovery of dna and that is called as the biotechnology era and in 1980s the commercialization of drug discovery is followed by the pharmaceutical companies with the help of the commercial chemistry lot of compounds have been synthesized and they are screened and lot of com medical com sorry uh, chemical compounds were synthesized and they are converted into the drug substances and uh, yeah, up to uh, from 1990 to current the robotics the automation technology and use of information technology all these things are uh, combined together and uh, all these technologies are utilized for the uh, development of new drug molecules okay so in earlier days only the chemistry people or the biologists or the physicians were involved in the drug discovery process but now almost all the discipline people like your biochemistry biophysicists and your uh, medicinal chemistry every people every every everybody is involving in that drug discovery process okay so there is no boundaries nowadays so anyone can involve in the drug discovery process nowadays so this is the market scenario okay so nearly 2.523 billion us dollars spent to bring a new molecule to the market okay so that much huge investment is required to uh, bring a new molecule to the market and nearly 127 billion us dollars spent on pharma r&d in 2019 and overall r&d expense in this uh, spends is expected so are expected to grow by 3% each year and reaching roughly 203 billion us dollars by 2024 so that is the uh, market scenario right now okay so it is a booming industry right now and uh, this is a cost wise uh, cost wise break up which is involved in the drug discovery and the development process okay so here uh, you can see uh, nearly 25% of the amount is utilized in the basic research and the discovery of the lead molecule okay nearly 25% of the amount is utilized and remaining 11 12% is utilized for the preclinical testing okay nearly 35% of the total investment is utilized up to the preclinical and the formulation development okay then a huge amount is utilized for the clinical trials and manufacturing process and all okay so the, the majority amount is utilized in the uh, finding of the lead molecule and the uh, determination of the pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic properties and all okay in the animal model or preclinical test so these are the steps involved in the drug discovery process okay so it is a very lengthy process i already told you know this drug discovery is not a simple process it is a very lengthy process okay so first point of the drug discovery is called as disease selection okay so we have to find out against which disease we have to develop or we have to find a molecule okay first we have to find out the disease and then we have to find out the target 
Then the third step, we have to identify the suitable bioassay method. And the fourth point is the finding the heat compounds and the lead compounds. I hope you know the difference between the heat molecules and the lead compound. Okay. Then we have to identify the pharmacophore, which portion of the molecule is responsible for the desired pharmacological effect. So that is called as the identification of a pharmacophore. Okay. Then we have to do the lead optimization. We have to optimize the structure to get the better activity. And ultimately, we have to do the toxicity studies also. So that is the main objective. We have to reduce the toxicity and we have to give more concentration on the toxicity also. Simultaneously, we have to study the pharmacokinetic properties also because most of the drugs are failed in this particular area, okay? Because of the poor pharmacokinetic property or poor, poor pharmacokinetic dynamic property, the drug discovery is failed, okay? Ultimately, we have to study the metabolism of the molecules also, okay? So whether the toxic metabolites are formed, okay, like that, we have to study all the metabolic studies in the uh, in vivo system. Then we have to uh, develop the large-scale manufacturing process. Then we have to go for the clinical trials. There is a huge process. Then only the drug molecule enter into the market. So it is a very lengthy process. Okay, from disease selection to market, it took nearly 10 to 15 years, and it consumes 2.5 to 3 billion US dollars. So such a huge investment, a huge time investment is required to bring a new molecule to the market. So this is the success rate in the drug discovery process. Okay, so you can see three images. Okay, nearly five thousand to ten thousand compounds are um, uh, in, uh, taken. Okay, nearly five thousand to ten thousand compounds are taken. From this, only two fifty compounds are entered into the preclinical studies because all these drug of compounds are the compounds should be filtered based on the pharmacokinetic properties and pharmacodynamic properties and the toxicity studies okay so if you are taking nearly 5000 to 10000 compounds approximately only 250 compounds reaches the preclinical studies and only five compounds will reach the clinical trials and only one drug will get the uh, approval okay so that is the success rate okay so it is a huge uh, investment may occur and large may play a huge number of compound library should be screened okay so from that only one compound will reach the market so it took too, so much time okay nearly 10 to 15 years will take and uh, these are the reasons for the failure in the drug discovery process okay so the majority is the uh, poor pk and ADME properties okay so the compounds which do not show the proper pharmacokinetic profile okay so such kind of compounds cannot be converted into a drug substances, okay? And 30% of the compounds shows the lack of efficacy, okay? So in the in, in the in vitro system, it shows some efficacy, but when the compound enters into a biological system, it will not show the efficacy, okay? So nearly 30% compounds fails in this category and various reasons are there. Some kind of compounds are produce animal toxicity and you can observe the ADR in humans also. And for commercial reasons also, the drugs get failure, okay? So these are all the reasons, but the main reason is the pharmaco, poor pharmacokinetic profile, okay? And the lack of efficacy, okay? Pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic parameters. So these two categories, these two parameters for the determining parameters for the success rate of the drug discovery, okay? So nowadays the people are discussing about the traditional drug design and the rational drug design. Nowadays, everybody is talking about the rational drug design okay so what is traditional drug design so in the case of traditional drug design we people are synthesize the compounds then this type of compounds are randomly screened against a particular target or a particular disease okay and uh, it is based on the trial and error method okay so it is not a um, it is not a guided one okay so trial and error method is followed in the traditional drug designing process and the ethnopharmacological approach was also followed, okay, based on the traditional knowledge or based on the data which is obtained from the ancestors. So, such kind of uh, uh, leads we have taken in the early days, okay. And most of the drugs are invented by the serendipity method that is called as accidental invention. And uh, we are following the classical pharmacology, okay, that is called as forward pharmacology, that is called as function based approach okay so that is a traditional one okay and it can be done only through the wet lab experiments okay so without using any computer straight away we are synthesizing some compounds and we are doing some animal studies okay 
So based on that, we are collecting the data. Okay, so only through the wet lab experiments, and it is a time and money consuming one. Okay, but now we people are following the rational rec design. Okay, rational. Okay, so it is a target or receptor based. Now we have lot of targets. Okay. So against which target we have to synthesize the drug? So we have a plan and we have some targets, okay? And the ligand and pharmacophore based, okay? So now we know the structure of the target. Now we are having the compound and we have to identify which part of the molecule is responsible for the pharmacological activity. So if you are trimming that molecule and if you are modifying that, we will get some better drugs, okay? And we are using computers also for the drug designing in the case of rational drug designing process. Okay. And the drug receptor interactions can be done by using computer that is called as a docking process. And your molecular graphics, molecular modeling, and conformational analysis can be done in the computer itself. Okay. So without going any wet lab experiments, we can do everything in the computer itself so that we can shortlist the compounds and we can take some promising compounds to the next level. Okay. And here we are using the reverse pharmacology or the drug repurposing. So this is the recent one. Okay. The people are using a um, lot of uh, the, your, uh, for example, your um, hydroxychloroquine or your ivermectin for the treatment of COVID-19 is uh, uh, drug repurposing method. Okay, so they are using the old drugs for the new uh, diseases or emerging disorders. Okay, such kind of uh, approach is also following by the uh, medicinal chemist. Okay, and uh, the rational drug design may reduce the duration of the invention period and it may reduce the cost also. So that is the main difference between the traditional drug design and the rational drug design. And the first step is the disease selection, right? So how the pharmaceutical companies are selecting the disease, okay? So the disease which are prevalent in developed countries and aim to produce drugs with better properties than the existing drugs, okay? So the pharmaceutical companies, nowadays a lot of multinational companies are there, no? So they are concentrating on the drug discovery, okay? Uh, against the disease which are prevalent in developed countries, okay? because they are investing a huge money, so they want to get back that money, okay? So that's why they are giving more concentration. For example, nowadays, most of the people are working on the prostate cancer, okay? Because prostate cancer is prevalent in years, okay? And uh, some of the people are working on, if, uh, for example, uh, nowadays everybody is working on COVID, COVID-19, okay? But nobody is working on Ebola because Ebola is predominant in African countries, okay, if you are developing new molecule against Ebola, you cannot sell the drug, okay. So that's why the people are synthesizing the compound or developing a new molecule against a disease which are prevalent in the developed countries, okay. And the pharmaceutical companies have to consider the economic factors as well as the medical one when they decide which disease to target when designing a new drug, okay. That is called as the economical factor. A yeah, huge investment has to be made towards the research and development of a new drug. Therefore, the companies must ensure that they get a good financial return. So that is their main thing, okay, for their investment. So they are investing a huge amount in the drug discovery process. So they need some good financial return. So based on that, only the pharmaceutical companies or researchers are selecting the disease, okay. And the next one is the target selection. So disease selection is over, okay? Now we have to find out the target against which target we have to develop the molecule, okay? So a drug target is a specific macromolecule which the drug will interact with, okay? So it is a specific macromolecule which is present in our body, okay? Where the drug targets, okay? So a drug target may be a receptor, or it may be an enzyme or it may be a nucleic acid. So if your drug produces a biological effect, there must be a molecular target for that agent in the body. Okay. So if the drug produces a biological response, okay, there must be a molecular target or a specific macromolecule for that particular compound in the body. Okay. So understanding which macromolecules are involved in a particular disease state is very, very important. So for that purpose only. We are studying the pathophysiology and all, okay? So it will help you what are the uh, macromolecules are involved in the particular disease condition so that you can 
uh, you can you can fix a target okay so the target specificity and target selectivity is also a crucial factor in the drug discovery process because the drug should be specifically attack the target and it should be selectively attack the target in case of your anti inflammatory compounds nsaids uh, almost all the compounds blocks both cyclooxygenase 1 and cyclooxygenase 2 okay but cyclooxygenase 1 uh, that is cox1 is essential for the uh, production of some prostaglandins for the normal physiological function okay but the cox2 is responsible for the conversion of arachidonic acid into the prostaglandin inflammatory prostaglandins okay so if you want to more design a molecule the drug should have more affinity towards cyclooxygenase 2 okay not cyclooxygenase 1 okay so that you can reduce the toxic effect also because a lot of isoforms are there your biology the body is a chemical factory and the biological system is a highly complex one okay so if you want to design a molecule it should have some specific target specificity and the target selectivity okay it should not bind on the unnecessary targets and to produce some unwanted effects so in the past the drug discovery sorry drug discovery of drug targets depends on finding the drug first okay so in the early that is called as the um, uh, conventional drug drug discovery process okay first the drugs were invented then the targets were identified okay then the natural chemical messengers are started to be discovered okay how the drugs acts then only they will explore all these things okay but many targets are still stay hidden and their chemical messengers are also unknown till now okay so for that purpose we are using genomics proteomics and bioinformatics plays an important role in the modern drug discovery process to identify the cellular and the genetic targets okay so nowadays many people are using all these areas okay genomics or omics tools okay therefore otherwise called as omics tools like your genomics and proteomics and all and we are using bioinformatics extensively for the identification of the drug targets in the cellular level and the genetic level okay so what is gen genomics so genomics is a study of genes and their functions okay so it aims to understand the structure of the genome including the mapping genes and the sequencing the dna okay so it completely explain the genomics okay of the human body okay so six to explore the findings from the sequencing of the human and other genomes to find the new targets okay so the human genome consists of a sequence of around 3 billion nucleotides see how big it is okay so the human genome consists of nearly 3 billion nucleotides which in turn probably encode 35000 to 50000 genes okay and based on 5 or 10 linked proteins per gene the number of potential drug targets may lie between 5000 to 10000 so that we can easily identify the targets okay so your snp method that is called a single nucleotide polymorphism libraries are used to compare these kind of genomes from both healthy and sick people so this kind of uh, genomic studies will give you the difference between the genes between the, uh, the, uh, the structure or function of genes between the normal people and the sick people okay so that it can easily identify and we can easily correct okay so that's why the genomics are widely used for the development of Uh, the new biological entities okay the drug molecule new molecules means there are two types of compounds are there one is called as new chemical entities and another one is called as new biological entities recently lot of biological molecules are introduced into the market okay so these kind of molecules are based on the genomics so they extensively used genomics for the development of uh, these kind of new biological entities okay so next we will move to the proteomics okay already you know all these things but anyway we will give you some uh, insight of your uh, proteomics and all okay so it is a study of proteome okay so a complete set of proteins which is produced by a species using the technologies of large scale protein separation and identification okay so it is become increasingly evident that the complexity of biological system lies at the level of proteins okay so reason medicinal chemistry or medicinal chemistry aspects deals with the interaction between the molecules and the proteins because all the almost all the targets which is present in our body are made up of proteins okay so we have to extensively study about the proteins okay so what are the proteins who are there in your biological system what is the structure of this kind of proteins okay and what are the function of this kind of proteins and how the structure is altered 
during the disease condition okay so how the drug molecule restore the structure of the protein okay so all these things were studied by using your proteomics okay so it is also at the protein level that disease process become manifest and at which most of the drugs act nearly 91% of the drugs act on this stage okay and therefore the analysis of proteins will be at most importance to target discovery okay so the protein identification is very very important fortunately nowadays we have protein data bank which will have a lot of protein targets so that we can based on the literature we can easily search the protein uh, from the protein data bank okay and uh, target identification with proteomics is performed by comparing the protein expression levels in the normal and the disease tissues okay so we have to find out which protein is expressed okay in the normal condition and the disease condition so that we can easily identify which kind of protein is involved in the disease condition so that is a important thing and that can be done by using your proteomics and 2d page that is polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis method is used to separate the proteins which are subsequently identified and fully characterized with your analytical techniques like your lcm sms or nmr techniques or x ray crystallographic techniques okay so all these type of methods or your instrumental methods or techniques are used to uh, purify or to identify the exact structure of the proteins okay and in the normal condition and in the disease condition also you can visualize or we can identify the protein nature by using these kind of instruments also okay and your bioinformatics okay so very wide area bioinformatics is a branch of molecular biology that involves extensive analysis of biological data using computers sir, but yeah sir professor santil kumar sir sir sorry yeah. for the interruption mm. uh, i want to say something uh, yeah. our program is uh, telecasted largely in our official website and in our facebook page and youtube channel if you want you can watch there and if anyone asks any question want to ask any question then write your question to the comment box please yeah okay okay okay, okay. So please carry on please carry yeah, on thank you thank you thank you thank you okay. so yes. the bio bioinformatics plays a key role in various stages of the drug discovery process which include the target identification okay bioinformatics is helpful for the identification of the target and computer screening of chemical compounds like your docking and all and the pharmacogenomics and all bioinformatics can be use okay so bioinformatics methods are useful to transform the raw sequence to a meaningful information okay so we are getting lot of data and these kind of data are the uh, the fragments of data can be converted into a meaningful information so bioinformatics is useful for this function also and it can help to compare the entire genome of pathogenic and non pathogenic conditions also okay so using the gene expression microarray techniques and the gene shift technologies a single device can be used to evaluate and compare the expression of up to 20000 genes of healthy and diseased individuals at once okay so by using these kind of technologies like your gene expression microarray technology or gene shift technologies we can evaluate the gene expressions okay during the uh, disease condition and in the normal condition okay by using these kind of things we can identify the targets okay so uh, this image will give you the insight of the marketed small molecule drug targets okay so nearly 47% of the marketed molecules targets the enzymes okay because lot of enzymes are there in your body which are involved in the disease conditions okay so lot of drugs are in enzyme inhibitors okay Uh, for example in case of your antiviral therapy lot of enzymes are involved in for example your reverse transcriptase enzyme integrase protease okay lot of enzymes are there so nearly 47% of the marketed molecules targets the enzymes okay and your gpcr ligand blockers are nearly 30% and uh, 1% drug is target the dna for example your antiviral drugs and the anti cancer drugs and integrins and miscellaneous targets other receptors ion channels and some kind of uh, drug molecules targets the transporters also okay but the majority is the gpr gpcr and the enzymes okay so most of the drug substances for the enzyme inhibitors right so then we will we have to move to the lead discovery okay 
so first we have to um, uh, know the difference between the hit molecule and the lead molecule okay so we are having for example we are having some hundreds of compounds okay and we are doing some in silico screen from that uh, we have to categorize the compound or we have to give some ranking okay so first 10 compounds or 15 compounds show some possible activity so that kind of compounds are called as hit compounds which show some promising activity or expected activity that under is called as hit compounds okay from that we have to find out a lead compound okay so which shows some desirable pharmacological activity with less side effects or toxic effects with better uh, pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic property okay so the compound is called as the lead molecule okay so the lead discovery is the identification of small molecules that modulates the protein function okay so ultimately speaking the it is an interaction between the molecule and the protein okay so in case of disease condition the protein function or structure is altered okay so if you are consuming the drug it binds to the protein target protein and it alters the functions of the protein or it will restore the function of that particular protein okay so we have to find out the lead okay so lead molecule is a compound which shows the desired pharmacological activity and this step provides a start for the drug design and development process okay so lead molecule discovery is the important point okay that provides a start for the drug design and the development process so there are various ways in which a lead compound might be discovered several uh, types or there are several ways or there to identify the lead molecule let's uh, discuss one by one okay the first one is the screening of natural products okay so that is the way actually the nature gives us a lot okay so from the straight away we can take the compound and we can get the idea okay from the natural sources so for example your plants microbes or the marine source and the from animals all provide a rich source of structurally complex natural products and from that we can get the idea of the lead molecule okay see here this is called as a poppy plant that is the uh, that is always called as the papaversum nicarum okay so it, which produce the uh, dried latex of opium okay so which contain morphine so this morphine is an alkali which is present in the poppy plant okay the dried latex contains morphine so this is the structure of morphine and this is the structure of pethidine okay so morphine is a centrally acting analgesic and pethidine is also uh, acts as a centrally acting analgesic okay so if you are removing the unwanted portions of morphine you can get the structure okay otherwise you can over mapping the structure over here okay so you will get so n methyl piperidine ring is there so this is n methyl piperidine here also you can see the n methyl piperidine a six member ring okay along with a benzene ring okay so if you are removing the unwanted portions okay it is uh, also able to bind on the same receptor and it can produce similar pharmacological effect so that is lead your pethidine is a purely synthetic compound but morphine is a natural compound okay so from that we can get the uh, idea okay how to synthesize a compound okay so so based on the pharmacophore map this is so this is called as pharmacophore if you are removing the unwanted portions if you are able to identify which portion of the molecule is binds with the receptor which part of the molecule produce the disease pharmacological activity we can particularly select that portion and we can do some drug designing okay so nowadays the fragment based drug designing is also emerged okay a lot of people are working on that right a fragment based so different different fragments which show some pharmacological activity or combined together and a new molecule is synthesized okay and this is a st structure of nalarpin okay so nalarpin is structurally similar to your morphine so that's why your nalarpin and naloxone is also binds on the same receptor okay so we can get the lead molecule from the natural products or several examples are, so, uh, are there so uh, I, have, I have given only one example right and second one is screening the synthetic compound library okay so in case of the uh, pharmaceutical companies they have prepared some thousands of compounds okay in their r and d they have synthesized lot of compounds and they are stored okay and they are stored catalog and screened on new targets as these new targets are identified okay whenever a new drug is emerged okay whenever the new target is identified 
the pharmaceutical companies takes all these molecules and all these compounds are screened against a particular target okay so one can utilize the in house chemical library or the commercial chemical database in case of academic research we can use either in house chemical library you can prepare your own library okay so you can design some molecule you can do some substitutions you can synthesize some number of compounds and you can do your chemical library that is called as in house chemical library okay otherwise you can use some commercial chemical database also okay a lot of commercial chemical database are there from that also you can uh, download the structures and you can do the screening okay so from that also you can get the lead molecule so that is one method to identify the lead molecule and the third one is uh, from the existing drugs okay so this is the easiest way okay so from the existing molecule we can get the new molecule or some new ideas okay so design structure which is similar to existing lead but different enough to avoid the patient patent restrictions okay so that is very very important right so your molecule should be different from the existing molecule but it should show some similar activity or better efficacy okay so sometimes this can be lead to the dramatic improvements in the biological activity and the pharmacokinetic profile okay for example this is called as benzyl penicillin okay it is a natural penicillin but unfortunately this natural penicillin is not orally active okay and the spectrum of activity is also narrow so natural penicillin so effective against only the gram positive organisms they are not effective against the gram negative organisms right and moreover they are acid labile so they cannot be given through oral routes okay so this is called as the ampicillin and this is amoxicillin okay so these two penicillins are called as semi synthetic penicillins okay they are not purely synthetic they are semi synthetic so basic 6 amino penicillinic acid moiety is taken and it is substituted and a small chemical modification will give you some better profile pharmacokinetic profile okay for example in case of your ampicillin okay so it is a uh, structural different from your benzyl penicillin it contains one amino group one amino group is extra is added so it gives amino penicillin that is called as ampicillin okay so this particular substitution changes its pharmacokinetic profile because your benzyl penicillin cannot be given through oral route but ampicillin can be given through oral route okay at the same time it is effective against some kind of gram negative organisms also so the spectrum of activity is increased at the same time the pharmacokinetic profile is also changed okay so it can be given through oral route also okay same ampicillin if you are substituting substituting one hydroxyl group that's why it is called as amoxicillin ampicillin amino penicillin is called as ampicillin it contains one more hydroxyl group so that's why it is called as amoxicillin okay so a yeah, small changes okay if you are introducing only one hydroxyl group at the para position okay so sir, this will change the uh, uh, sir yeah, yeah sir we have time limitations please uh, take two to three oh, time restriction is there no we have yeah, three minutes left okay 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 i will skip some some slides okay and by enhancing the side effects also we can get the lead molecule so for example sulfonylamide from the sulfonylamide we can get the chlorothiazide or tolbutamide and all and uh, sildenafil citrate is a um, uh, originally it was developed as a coronary vasodilator but now it is useful for the treatment of erectile dysfunction and we can get the molecule from the natural ligand also for example the 5 hydroxy tryptamine is secreted in the brain so from this structure we can synthesize the smart tryptamine and all okay so from the adrenaline we can synthesize salbutamol which is having similar pharmacological activity and the serendipity method is also there like your cisplatin penicillin g nitroglycerin sildenafil citrate all these type of compounds are uh, invented by serendipity method and these are the factors that affect the drug discovery process medicinal drug procurement screening facilities drug development facilities and the expenses that we will skip and uh, we will move to the computer drug designing process okay so cap works with the collaboration between the structural biologists biophysicists and the computational scientists and cap reduce the cost and time okay the, in the conventional method we are using the conventional way but now we are using the computer drug designing so that it reduce the cost and time and it gives insight knowledge of the drug receptor interaction and it will speed up the drug discovery and the development process 
and uh, the filtration of large compound libraries into smaller compound sets of predicted activity those could be further tested experimentally so that is possible by using cat and uh, this will give you the uh, information about the bio affinity and the admet properties and designing of new molecules and the fragment based drug designing is possible in case of uh, computer drug designing okay so for the target identification target validation lead discovery lead optimization and predicate up to preclinical studies we can use the computer aided drug dis drug designing or discovery process okay and there are two types of uh, cat method is there one is called as structure based and another one is called as ligand based okay so if you are uh, designing a molecule based on the structure of the target protein that is called as structure based drug designing and if you are designing a molecule based on the chemical nature and if you are doing some case studies that is called as uh, ligand based drug designing process or pharmacophore modeling and uh, these are the tools which are used for the um, uh, development of drug in the uh, computer drug designing process okay several tools are there okay so we have to go for some open source tools okay so in silico drug discovery uses two different types of tools one is called as bioinformatics tools and another one is the cheminformatics tools okay so the bioinformatics tools are easily available and it is freely available to the public but the cheminformatics tools or the pharmacoinformatics tools are uh, used for the designing of ligand molecules and dominated by the proprietary or commercial software okay so we have to purchase the compounds and uh, sorry license uh, software then we have to do the drug designing process so we have to always go for the open source compound open source tools okay so these are some of the database of uh, chemical compound that is open source databases okay you can use popchem kembel zinc chem spider nci drug bank drugs at fp so all these database will give you the structure of the chemical compounds and uh, these are the open source tools which are used for the molecular editors or the drawing tools okay for example your chem sketch is a open source tool okay so you can easily download and you can easily draw the structure of the compound and you can predict uh, you can you can calculate the uh, um, uh, uh, properties of the compound also at the same time your medcom designer axelris draw and marvin sketch all these type of uh, softwares are open source tools and for this uh, structure optimization also we are using so many open source tools okay so open babel is a very very good uh, open source tool and it is easily uh, you can convert the structure format also and apart from that avagatro is one of the important tool and it is a easily available open source tool and it is a very small one so that you can uh, do the energy minimization optimization everything okay and for the molecular descriptor tools also we can use several open source tools okay which will give you the uh, description of a molecule chemical basis descriptions you can get by using these kind of uh, open source tools and for the target identification also we can use several open source tools for example your pass online will give you the uh, possible drug targets okay and your mole inspiration is also it's a very simple one okay and target hunter is one of the important uh, uh, database okay and your cancer is the um, uh, tool which is used to get the cancer targets against a particular thing and cis target prediction that is a very very good open source tool which is used for the prediction of macromolecule target of small molecules okay and for the admet properties that is a very very important thing okay you have to study about the pharmacokinetic properties of the drug and you have to study about the toxicity profile of the molecule also so for that we can use o series software and oncologic software okay these two softwares will give you the drugability property of the compounds at the same time it will give you the ADMET properties there is absorption distribution metabolism elimination and the toxicity profile of the drug molecules okay at the same time pass also will give you the um, possible activity and toxicity studies and cdm is a excellent one okay so it will give you all the uh, descriptors like your log p log s admet profile medicinal chemistry aspect and the synthetic accessibility also can be uh, accessing by using your cdm properties and pkcsm which is developed by the Uh, Cambridge software. Okay, so this particular software or open source tool is used to predict the uh, toxicity profile of the compounds. Okay, so all these tools are like your pre-ADMT. So that is also an excellent tool which is used for the um, uh, estimation of the toxicity and the molecular docking. Okay, so already you know what is docking. So you are having a ligand and you are having a target and you are doing some docking. Okay, and you will get a complex and we have to study about the 
stability of the complex and the binding mode of the complex okay so that we can identify how the drug binds with the drug target molecule okay so for that also lot of open source softwares are available like your isem doc auto doc so these two count, uh, talking programs are widely used nowadays okay you can see lot of publications also by using your auto doc and all okay and isem doc is a simple offline tool which is widely used and it is very simple to use also which will give some valid uh, points and for the visualization we are using several type of compounds like your pymol and chimera and discovery studio to how the drug interacts with the protein molecule okay and these are the clinically approved drugs which are discovered by the computer drug designing like your captopril and most of the anti hiv drugs or yeah santil kumar sir your yeah. time is over yeah 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 i'll finish i'll finish your time <laughs> is over now but uh, okay. we have some okay. questions wait 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 i'll finish it i'll finish it okay So, in conclusion, the drug discovery is an expensive and time-consuming process. Okay, to shorten it. the time, we can use many computational tools and open-source tools can be used for the academic research purpose. But in silico, in vitro, in vivo correlations must be made to establish the activity of the compounds. Okay. So, uh, uh, I must thank my college and the Faculty of Pharmacy, uh, Dhaka International University, and colleagues and friends and researchers around the globe and the students. So, if you are having any doubts, you can ask now. May now I ask this some question? question? Thank yeah, you. Yes, you are sure, ma'am. Thank you very yes. much, sir, for your nice speech. <coughs> And uh, first question, um, it's from Sandhi Akash, one of my uh, students. Uh, he asked. Uh, Uh, we use drug for short uh, short or long time effect why we use vaccine is vaccine is used for long time effect sir pardon pardon uh, i couldn't get it why we use vaccine is vaccine is uh, you uh, is used for long time effect pardon pardon once again please uh, long term sir why we use vaccine is it used vaccine. for long term effect yes sir vaccine vaccines vaccine. no so vaccines yes. are uh, the, the the action of vaccines are somewhat different okay so vaccines are the biological compounds right so when you are introducing the vaccine into your body it will produce some antigen antibody reactions okay so that your immune system is gets boosted so it will give you so long for long term protection but in case of drugs it is not like that so vaccination is always better for example in case of covid also the people are using vaccines right they are they are going to develop some vaccines okay my dear colleagues and my dear students uh, if you want to know anything from our today's resource person please write your uh, question to the comment box we have a very short time so write quickly See if you need the PowerPoint, I will share it with you. No problem. I will send it through the mail. Okay, so you can give it to your students also. So you can also use the tools. Your faculty members will also use the tools. And if you want to interact with me, uh, you can you can always contact me. You can contact me at any time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, this type of webinar uh, helps to develop our knowledge, and we want uh, you to come here again. and uh, thank you very much and now i would like to uh, request to our director of iqsc professor shirajul islam sir to say something shirajul islam sir good evening uh, thank good you ma'am uh, can you reach me yes, yes sir. sir we do here uh, thank you very much Uh, i was hearing uh, very deeply really speaking a uh, very depthful uh, speech and on behalf of dhaka international university i would like to say apart from academic activities dhaka international university is instantly organizing 
National and International Lecture Series, Faculty and Students Development Programs. Truly speaking, this type of collaboration activities are surely getting global views and strong benefits for students and faculties. I would gladly thank Professor Dr. R. Shintin Kumar for his distinctive, sound, deeply rooted and interactive lecture on very timely event, recent times in drug discovery and design. He meetings, including software uses. This is very high time for all faculties to use that type of simulation, animation, and everything to see the defects before going in experiment. I also thank Professor Horida Begum, Chairman, Department of Pharmacy, host Ms. Naurin Ferdosi, all participants connected, connected in this digital platform, faculties of all departments, especially Department of Pharmacy and from IQC and IT team of Dhaka International University, all stakeholders of Vikas, especially for Dr. K. Priya Ma'am, who is doing a lot of work from this side and being director, I might thank Professor Dr. Bhulanath Dotto. He is making close bridging between these two institutes. Being the director, I might have a lot of activities and my team. So I strongly hope and believe in near future, we might have a lot of programs relating student development, faculty development for getting the enriched benchmark and qualities in Dhaka International University with keeping with Vikas and other institutes. Again, I would like to thank you for your participation in this platform. Thank you very much. Hope all sound and safe health. Thank you. Ma'am, I finished. Thank so you very much, sir. Thank you, uh, Shira Jusnam Pradhan, sir, for your nice speech. And we are on the verge of ending today's program. Uh, lastly, I want to say the practice of drug discovery process has been revolutionized with the involvement of some newer techniques. Uh, various advantage, adv advanced techniques and modern disciplines uh, improve the quality of drug discovery process. And the main objective of, of today's uh, webinar is to highlight the trend followed in drug discovery and development. Thank you, Professor uh, Santhil Kumar, sir, for your such an um, informative speech. And uh, my dear students, if you want to know anything from uh, our um, uh, research person, you can send your question to me. I will forward this question to our research person. And uh, it would be a great help for us. So thank you, every, everybody. Again, thank you for joining. And uh, thank you, Professor Farida Begum, ma'am. Thank you, Shira Zulisam, sir. Without your friend's support, it would be quite impossible to conduct today's program. And Santhil Kumar, sir, you are uh, such a genius and you are a very good researcher. Uh, I have seen your research papers. Um, and the next time, whenever we will arrange any webinar, then uh, definitely we will invite you and hope to see you uh, soon. Thank you very much, Professor Santhil uh, Kumar, sir. And thank you all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir.